Alternative meat companies are turning their attention towards a growing market segment, fine dining restaurants. And with global demand for plant-based fast foods taking a hit, firms are pivoting to creating premium products. And examples include plant-based Wagyu beef and cultivated meats like lab-grown fish maw. Chloe Chu with the story. This is a story about food. But it starts off in a laboratory. These cultured fish cells will eventually be moulded into a fish maw. In the process, it will be combined with plant-based proteins. We are currently using some existing bar reactor. So it's a big vessel where the cells will be floating in the nutrient feed. Under that condition, the cell would not have the growing environment like inside animal bodies where they can form tissues and muscles. We need to provide plant-based material to bind the cells together in order to make it a lot more easier for cooking and marinating. Even as the market for plant-based fast food takes a hit, the firm is confident that creating premium cultivated meat products will be the next step forward. The plant-based market has been facing inflationary pressures and attracting fewer investors in recent months. Large companies like Beyond Meat has also posted a 30% drop in sales in the second quarter of the year and is expecting an even bumpier road ahead for the alternative meat space. But cultivated meat firms believe there's still a market for gourmet products that can also fetch higher prices. The company is building a pilot production site in Singapore. It'll open its doors early next year. Meanwhile, plant-based alternative meat company Wamame that sells high-end products like alternative Wagyu beef, caviar and tobiko is cooking up a storm with one of its customers, a vegetarian restaurant. Since 2021, the firm has seen 30% more fine dining restaurants wanting to buy its products. It's focusing sales and research and development efforts on higher-end markets. The early adoption of plant-based, it tended to happen to be more in the fast food, the, uh, I would say, um, low-scale restaurants. Now you see the, uh, the adoption of uh, plant-based is moving up the value chain. So there's still a lot of runway for us. High volume uh, based products like mints uh, and nuggets might be plateauing out, but the, in the fine dining space, they're looking for that texture, the mouthfeel, the focus on appearance as well. The firm is already expanding to Southeast Asian countries like Indonesia and Thailand, where it's noticed similar trends. Though the future of mass market plant-based products remain uncertain, one expert believes rebranding might be the adrenaline boost the industry needs. The industry is uh, putting a, a lot of effort to make this uh, plant-based meat taste like real meat. Therefore, they add the uh, different ingredients. But when the companies, they add in this, the cost will go up. And the taste uh, will never be the same because it's a plant-based material. I think uh, moving forward, it will be more sort of uh, um, practical for company to, to create a separate category called plant-based food instead of calling it plant-based meat. Prof Chen adds that ultimately it's about giving consumers more options. And when we're joined by Dr. Leong Lai Ping, Senior Lecturer at the Department of Food Science and Technology at NUS. Oh, Dr. Leong, uh, we just heard that it's about giving consumers more options, but it could be the suggestion is that if you move into gourmet food, that option is an especially expensive option. So it's an, it's an option that is reserved for the very few who can actually afford that. Yes, that's right. I mean, if uh, you're selling Wagyu beef and Wagyu beef is a lot more expensive than normal beef, of course, only a few people can access it. Okay, uh, the people who can afford it will pay for the more expensive one. But there must be something that they believe they are paying for and is worth the money, right? So there is market for the more expensive plant-based food and there is a uh, market for uh, cheaper plant-based food. Uh, Dr. Leong, so help us understand this, right? I mean, there are plant-based meats and then there are lab-grown proteins. Generally, which is healthier for us? And also of the two, which do you think has more potential to actually take off uh, in Singapore and, and sort of there's this uh, sustenance of sales in those products? 
Okay, uh, which one is healthier? <laughs> I don't think anybody can really tell you which one is healthier. But if you say which one has more potential, at the moment in time, of course, uh, the lower hanging fruit is the plant-based meat compared to the lab-grown ones. So the lab-grown meat uh, is not that it has not got no potential. It definitely has potential, but there are some problems that need to be fixed. Uh, they have to look at lower cost of production and things like that. And if they can improve on the technologies, definitely there are potential for both of them. All right. I, I, I take it by potential, you mean there must be enough demand to justify investors putting money. We heard in that report a few investors in recent months for the plant-based meat market. Uh, what must change before people in Singapore are have greater demand for these products? So we do need to ask, you know, why people would even consider it eating plant-based or alternative protein uh, as a replacement to normal meat in our diet. So uh, the reason why people are going for all these products, the original reason is because of uh, the environment, right? But of course, there's a hype and people hear about, oh, okay, this particular plant-based product, it tastes just like meat and people go for it as well. So hype can only last for so long. But if you want to sustain it, there must be something that can help you sustain. So like anything else, uh, all other foods, if the food wants to remain in the market, it must taste good. The cost must be at a particular price that consumers are willing to pay. So um, you probably have seen that some of these products out there, they are so expensive. So people are not willing to pay for it. And they may taste good, but they are too expensive. And the ones that are cheaper, perhaps they don't taste so good. So uh, people don't want to pay for it. So that is, there is a problem there that must be solved. So taste and cost. And of course, at the same time, um, if you have meat out there, real meat out there that is competing with these plant-based products or alternative protein, if they continue to sell at a certain price that is cheaper or the same as this alternative product, the consumers who are used to this product, they, they don't see why they should change, right? So um, there are things that um, different people can do to solve these problems. Uh, one thing is to find a way to make it taste better but this way to make it taste better must be at lower cost. And Dr. Leong, you know, like um, the, the technology that goes into making sure the meat tastes exactly like Wagyu uh, and, it, and it's tasty, all of that investment uh, costs a lot. Uh, you know, as Singapore is investing you know, in such technologies without even knowing what the guarantee of its returns are, how feasible is it? Or are we just better off just ensuring that our regular farms improve their productivity, go into urban farming, you know, that sort of thing? Well, um, I would say in terms of investment, we should invest in all. Uh, invest in all? Why we should invest in all? I mean, if you have uh, received advice regarding investment products financially, uh, they would say, Diversify, diversify, and diversify. So it's the same with food. We need to diversify just like we diversify in alternative protein. We diversify in terms of traditional uh, farm production. So all these things will help to improve the food security of the country. We cannot just rely on one thing or two things or just a few things, right? So yeah, definitely invest in them so that we can improve them and so that one day people will consider all these different products in their diet. Many thanks for your time and thoughts, uh, Dr. Leong Lai Ping from NUS.